Awesome. Welcome to the Silent Flute Live Lecture. I'm going to give a little sample onto YouTube. I've already done that before. This is another one. And when you see me looking up here, these are for the subscribers on the Facebook group that I do the lecture for. Today's discussion is on ways of stopping thought, Narodaha and Samadhi. And I'll go ahead and begin again with the chanting of, and I say again because there was a technical difficulty, so this is a retake. Chanting Yoga Sutras 1 through 1 5 through 117. Vrittaya panchatayaha klishta klishtaha pramana vipariyaya vikalpa nidra smritayaha pratyakcha numana gama pramanani vipariyayo mityadnyanam atadrupa pratishtam prabda nyana nupati vastushunyo vikalpaha Pava pratyaya lambana vritir nidra Anuputa vishaya asam pramoshaha smriti Apyasa vairagya bhyam tan nirodaha Tatra stitao yatno pyasaha Satu dirgakala nairantarya Satkara sevito dritha pumihi Dristanusravika Vishaya Vitrishnasya Vashikara Samnia Vairagyam Tatparam Purusha Kyater Gunavai Trishnam Vitarka Vichara Nanda Smita Rupa Nugama Sampragnataha O If you heard me in the middle, I giggled. There was a realization that came through. You, when you do mantra, mantra is mind instrument. Tra is instrument. A couple weeks. Mind is instrument. Uh, uh, my, mind is man. Tra is instrument. Mantra, mind instrument, is this. Uh, David Garig calls magical utterance. And so this was a mantra. Um, each sutra is a mantra and so I just stated 17 minus 5 12 12 no but you count the first. so 13 13 utterances I just went through and it picks up with there are five vrittis vritti is this system it's a pattern it's an automism it's automatic and it's a pattern in your posture a pattern in your breathing a pattern in your eating and your thinking and the, what we're doing with yoga is alchemy, right? We're transmuting and transforming normal vritti into higher vritti. What Angie knows, I love this word, pragna. Pra is higher, nya with the silent j, nya is wisdom, knowledge. Pragna. We transform just normal knowing into higher knowing. And this is all to get the perspective of what is yoga. Yoga, yoga is chitta vritti narodaha. Yoga is the stopping of mind. Mind is chitta. The systems of the mind, vritti, yoga, and narodaha is the stopping of it. The stopping of mind. And as I just talked about in the Stand Your Ground event, and I went really deep into law of attraction, all is vibrating. Everything is vibrating. If you can name it, if you can conceive of it, it has a vibration, including your thoughts, your emotions, your mind itself has a frequency, a vibration. The stopping of that. Well, how do you stop it? Because nothing stops in the universe. It's, nothing is absolute zero. What you do is you remove mind. Mind doesn't want to be removed. Mind is here to survive, but it's also self. It, it wants itself to promulgate. The stopping or erasing of mind, remain. what remains is that thing that can't be named, that has no frequency. 
can't be named. If it can be named, it has a frequency simply by virtue of the fact that you have a name for it. The name itself has a frequency. So imagine, pretend for a moment, I wonder what Nerodaha, the stopping, no mind, nirvana. I wonder what no mind, Nerodaha, if I could draw that, what it would look like. If I could make a, some geometric shape or, or a painting, or if I could just imagine, what would no mind look like? That's a tool worthy of meditation. And a way to facilitate that is through japa of a mantra. So mantra is the mind instrument. Japa is the repetition of it. Like when you have beads, I don't have my beads on right now. Uh, I hung those beads up actually because they, they were given to me by a teacher. It's not my teacher anymore. But you say a mantra and then you count the bead. And then you say it again, you count the next bead. You say it again. I'll answer your question before I tune all, out of uh, YouTube, Carlos. And anybody else, if you have questions, you just type them throughout the lecture. So, uh, because if you didn't know, I'm lecturing also on the silent flute. This is just a sample. So if I look up here, that's the Facebook group. If I look down here, that's the YouTube. You re repeat the mantra to yourself. Nirodaha, 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 nirodaha. Now you could say no mind, no mind, no mind, no mind. That, that, I mean, whatever works for you. The power of the Sanskrit language. I'm not a Sanskrit scholar, so I could just repeat what I've read about it. Things like it can be coded into binary because of how non-redundant it is. Great. But the power of it being the language of source for yoga and that it's not our spoken language because it's dead, it stimulates that part of our minds that is where imagination happens. And where imagination happens is where potential, where solutions occur that are outside of right in front of us. It's very obvious, you know, if your hands on a hot stove and it's burning, you take it off, right? It's very obvious two plus two equals four, but what's not obvious are more amorphic ideas, like what is no mind, narodaha? What is a system of thought, vritti? What is mind? What is the mind field, chitta? Start to contemplate these things. What is a mind field? What, what would that look like? Narodaha, what is the absence of mind what would that look like i could give you my ideas but it's to stimulate your imagination in your you've been conditioned since birth to not imagine these sorts of things that it's somehow against your religion or it's against your culture to eliminate mind and when mind is eliminated that's when magic happens. Manifesting, Sanskrit's very non-redundant. It's extremely non-redundant. Now, it's part of, this is a question, did you say Sanskrit is or is not redundant? It's very non-redundant. Now, it's ambiguous. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, redundancy is actually really important in science uh, because kind of like, what is it, the reflexive, property of in mathematics like if two times three equals six and three times two equals six kind of thing you need those kinds of redundancies to eliminate any misconceptions but part of redundancy is it's slow progress is slow when you need to be redundant and early on in the evolution of language you had big 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 concepts the same concepts that we have today the concepts haven't changed <laughs> all of the concepts available today were available 10,000 years ago. But they had fewer words to describe them all. So that means each word encapsulated a much bigger meaning. So part of the progress of society is more and more refined language that we can express more precise meaning and be clearer. But also there's something magical that's lost in that. It's like my physics teacher in Italy said when you reduce it down and finer and finer and finer as calculus has done you lose you lose ah, you lose the circular nature of what you're describing and it becomes a line that was his analogy basically if you had a huge circle 
so big that if you looked at any segment of it, it would basically look like a line. And cal modern calculus assumes it's a line. But as soon as you turn it into a line, it is a line, and you lose the whole circle. So that's what words do. Words are taking the sphere of existence and the sphere of perception and reducing it into a bunch of lines. And that's why the map is not the territory, the menu is not the meal, and the word is not the experience. Norodaha is not the experience of no mind. But it points your mind in the general direction. You're like shooting an arrow in the direction, and then it's up to you to take over the impetus and start to contemplate what could no mind be, which is almost like a, a paradox. Like how can mind be used to contemplate what the absence of itself would be? You could do that. You're in nature. You're, you're, what would the absence, let's say you're at your house, and what would the absence of your presence be like at your house? It'd be very still. It might start to accumulate muck because the air is dirty. That's what would happen with maybe no mind. I don't, I don't want to feed you what would happen, but just begin to contemplate no mind. Now, when we, uh, you're, you're meant to chew on it, you know? I have my notes here that I'm looking at. So, we, I started the lecture by chanting Sutra 1-5, which was, lists the five vrittis, the five systems of thought that are causing afflictions. This is right knowledge, wrong knowledge, misconception, memory, and sleep. Now, you don't really need to consider sleep because that only happens when you're sleeping, but sleep is a thought. Sleep is the thought of sleep. That's why tiredness is an illusion. Sometimes the body needs to revamp, but as I just did the other night, I was so tired, so tired at 11 p.m. And so I laid cross-legged, or I sat cross-legged in my bed, and finally I went to sleep at 4 a.m. I wouldn't say I was meditating straight for five hours, but I was in and out of meditation, just kind of flirting with the edge of that. And so when I allowed my body to recharge, it turned out my mind actually wasn't as tired as I thought it was. Yeah? Okay, so that's the end for uh, the live lecture here on YouTube. And okay, you had a question. Let me get to that. How long did it take you to memorize that? Just a couple weeks. What do you feel that we are? Oh, didn't know. Got it. We are. We are. We are. Hmm. We are fractals. We're fractals. Yeah? We're fractals. That means there's something bigger that looks like us and there's something smaller that looks like us. Yeah? Um, other than that, what we are is something unnameable. But th those are the two, that's our two, the duality of our existence, mind and self. The mind is a fractal of a bigger mind and a smaller mind and self is limitless. Okay. Namaste, Carlos.